Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Shelly and I am so grateful that you guys are here today. We are going to do a bunch of Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, Morphe X Jaclyn Hill. Jaclyn recommended, not like a huge fan of Jaclyn, but I do have a lot of her things and I, I don't know how you guys feel about her or whatever else. I do have some of the hairy lipsticks that aren't hairy. They, they were never hairy for me. But I have a few of her favorites. A few of the things that over the years that she mentioned, and I gotta tell you, my first introduction, I'm sorry, I'm getting organized here. My first introduction with Jacqueline was on one of her wedding makeup look videos, and it was insane. I'm gonna use the Morphe eyeshadow base. And I do have some residual color, even though my skin is clean. It's a little staining. You can actually even see it on my finger. Uh, staining from the Circle Loco palette. <laughs> Just so you know, that's one that you're probably going to want like a industrial eyeshadow base if you're going to use it or wash it off right away. Use it sparingly. I don't know that she's ever talked about this uh, L'Oreal Lumi Glotion, but I like it. And when I was going through and putting the stuff together, I'm like, you know what? I'm actually going to use that because I, I haven't. So I'm going to just take a little bit of it, dab it onto my high points. The only reason is because, you know, Jacqueline's aesthetic is usually, I got too much, is usually really darn shiny and glowy. So I figured might as well start with some, just start the whole process. A little glowy, a little shiny. And it, if you guys recall, I haven't done it in a long time on camera, but if you guys recall, I really like starting my foundation process with an illuminator underneath. It either peeks through or as the day progresses, it ends up looking relatively pretty. Just kind of like sometimes the best we can hope for. This is not a, a professional makeup artist uh, YouTube channel. You're here by accident, <laughs> sorry. Okay, this is something I know that she's talked about. This is the Morphe, I think this is Fluidity, right? Yeah, Fluidity. I've got 2.6 matte. I suspect this might be maybe a little light for me my current, but we're going to try it. I've had it for a long time. It actually might not be too bad. A little light, but not horrible. We'll, we'll darken it up with other products. You guys, I've been doing the Wayne Goss product placement where he just uses just the tiniest bit and then buffs the holy hell of that into your skin with a, like a dry brush. And I've really been digging it. I use very little product that way. And it feels more natural. It doesn't feel cakey. It feels like I get a relatively good coverage depending on it. And this Fluidity foundation, I felt was too thick for me, but I think I was just going in to him. This and like the e.l.f. CC cream, when I first got that, I was like, oh, this is just horrible. But it was because I was using too much product. Once I toned my product application down a little bit, I started enjoying it so much more. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more just kind of on some areas where I know that I've got some discoloration as opposed to using concealer. This is where the whole Shelly and Jacqueline worlds collide. I, I don't like the whole mask-like look. Now this is not something that she, I don't think I've ever seen her use. This is the um, Billion Dollar Brow, but I realized I had some kind of dark circles there. Probably leftover blue eyeshadow from Circa Loco. I do like that palette and don't let me convince you that I don't like it. I do like it just wants to stick around. Do whatever works for you. Like there's a reason why we, we've lived as long as we have. It's not gonna kill you. This makeup, it washes off, right? Changing up my battery, I'll be right back. Did I get you in roughly the same place? I hope so. <laughs> okay, maybe a little low. Back with a fresh battery and a relatively matte, boring face with a little bit of that blue transfer sticking out. I am sorry, you guys. Okay, let's, uh, let's get into our new palettes. I bought two of these. Initially, I was concerned that they would be too light on anybody's skin. And I certainly didn't think that the bronzer was going to work. These two look very similar. They're the two lightest shades in the collection because these were the ones that were available when I when I went online to order them. These two bronzers look almost identical. The two blushes, this one's a little bit more of a cool tone lilac. This one's got a little bit more of a peach undertone to it. The peachy pink one is called Pink Me Up and Oh Honey. And the other one is called Lilac Love and Top Tan. Mm, I Maybe I'll do Lilac Love and Top Tan. I can't remember, but I think the first time I used this on my channel, I might have used the other one. So we're going to go in with a little bit of the Top Tan. And I think what I have discovered about it, about these palettes, is that yes, they go on light. You can build them up. 
and it becomes easier for those of us that like to abuse blush products to to not ruin our faces as we're beating our faces oh my gosh you guys so i don't know i mentioned it before in my channel i don't know why i just thought about this but the website who what where w-e-a-r who what where they send out i get like two emails from them every morning it's usually one of the first things after i go through and delete all the spam I go through and read those skincare that well they have a skincare newsletter that goes out and then they have like a fashion fashion finds kind of newsletter as i was reading i saw something called dark academia i think that's what they called it as being like the new trend for this i'm guessing fall but as i was looking at what their example was i'm like shit that's like that's what i wear i wear blazers and sweater vests and loafers i always have so if you also wear those clothes, you're in trend and didn't even know it. Okay, I'm actually going to take the same blush in the palette and go right over the top. And I just kind of like to swirl these together. I just feel like you don't get that kind of starting and stopping. The palettes are generous sized. Like there's a lot of product in these, at least it appears. The ability to build it up and how just beautiful it looks on the skin is worth it for me. Even though I know I have to go in quite a bit. And I find that I mix a lot. I mean, I... Most of the time I end up mixing, mixing the two together. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with my eyeshadow, but apparently I'm going to do something that can work with the lilac and the tan. Okay, so those are the... And one thing I don't like about them is, I don't know if you can see, I've already got my grubby fingerprints all over this, which is what happens. And even if you wipe it off, it's like now it's just smeared. I need like a bottle of Windex to keep these pretty. I like the palettes. I think they're nice, generous. I don't think this is a collection where you need every single one of them. There is no way to stack these gracefully because the J is raised. I guess if you did it that way, kind of, but they're going to slide around. And if you're not careful about how where you place them, then they're going to fall and then you're going to have a mess. All right, you guys, let's get into some of these eyeshadow palettes. I have a number of them. These are her collabs with Morphe. We've got the Vault. The, uh, this is called the Morphe X Jaclyn Hill. This is her Vault. There's four palettes in there. And then these are the two ginormous ones. There's the Volume 1 and the Volume 2. The Volume 1, uh, I got the original one, so not the re-released one that they might have changed some formulas. But now this has been out for a hot minute, and I don't remember what the shelf life is on it. Probably 12 months, 12 or 18 months. It might be pushing its longevity which is a damn shame because I haven't hit pan on any one of these. This is the problem with having a huge eyeshadow collection is that if you don't use them, then they could expire before you use them. Now, is this technically expired? I don't know. I'm also someone who's prone to taking Tylenol a year after it's expired. So this is the volume two palette, quite a bit different. Although if you hide all these crazy colors, you get a warm neutral palette. So both of those are very, very usable to me. I think these ones, I think that the, the quality might be a little different than the larger palettes. You guys have to correct me if I'm wrong. Let's just take a look at these. The first one's called Armed and, Armed and Gorgeous. This is probably the most recent one that I've used. I love the grungy greens. The oranges, you know, these kind of warmer colors, they're fun for summer. The next one is called Dark Magic. I don't think I've ever used this one dark magic. Maybe I need to because I've never used it before. But it is dark, 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 dark. Hence the name, dark magic. Okay. The next one I have is called ring the alarm. I've used this one quite a few times too, I think. Neutral everyday wearable palette. These are so much easier than these ones to use, to experiment, to try with. I like the fact that you have four individual palettes in this vault collection because you can grab just the one or i think you can get by just the one that you want the, sorry the last one is called bling boss and for my purple lover girls out there here you got your cool tones you've got your purples maybe i'll use this one mm, maybe i need to do this one today we i had a request to do more more purples and i went through like a month of using purple palettes. I probably should do a life update video, but I just don't have anything interesting that's going on. That being said, I'm ridiculously busy. Like I'm always doing stuff. There's not enough hours a day. Oh. You guys, I am, I'm always so ridiculously busy. Every day I have to decide what doesn't get done. So I pre-film YouTube videos. I post them up Wednesdays and Fridays. I hope you guys are cool with that. Let's try this. Let's try this palette out here. It, like I said, if I recall, my impression of these little vaults was that the quality wasn't as good as the bigger ones. I didn't know which one I was going to use today. But we're going to start with that matte color in here called Hush Hush. 
think that is your transition shade in this palette. And again, I have that Morphe eye base, but it's translucent. It doesn't give you a lot of a lot of color. There is a lot of kick up in Morphe palettes, kind of about probably about the same as what I would see in ColourPop. I think Morphe was the first non-drugstore. What I mean by non-drugstore is I know that it's more economical. To me, the only where the only place I can find Morphe products is either online. I mean, I don't have a Morphe store anywhere near me. I can only find them at Ulta. So when I when I have to buy, when I can only find things at Ulta, I start feeling like they're non-drugstore, even though they're kind of in the drugstore section, at least right next to it. A lot of kick up in that. My first eye drawn is to this purple, but if you take that out, it's not really a purple palette. It's more of a berry palette, isn't it? Sorry, Christy. I just kind of lied to you. We're going to go in with Mystic. This one right here to kind of darken up. And I still have the same brush. I probably should have switched to a smaller one. Okay, this is not coming across as patchy or anything, so I don't know why I was thinking that this was a not as good quality, but this seems to be actually, maybe it was just the one shade in the one palette that I was using that I didn't love so much. I went in a little ham on this side. Okay, I am getting quite a bit of kick up uh, that's traveled underneath my eyes here, at the tops of my cheeks, kind of to be expected. I should have done a better job tapping it out. All right. I need to buff that out quite a bit. First exposure to Miss Hill was uh, a wedding video. I'm gonna use this color called Fairy Treasure. I'm gonna use that on the outer. This feels a little drier. I'm not gonna use every color in this palette. Anyway, anybody else missing Tati? That's what I am. I hope she comes back to us at some point. That color was beautiful, but now I'm like super stained on my finger. That dark color that I just used, Fairy Treasure, is like a duochrome. I mean, it flips. It almost looks like it has like a super dark blue, or dark, dark purple underlay to it. And then I'm going to use Ballsy, this color right here, as my all over the lid shimmer. Still on that same stained finger. I'll switch on my other hand. And I know you guys probably get tired of me doing the same eyeshadow technique, but it's the one that looks most flattering. And I do have a Zoom call today I'm here in a little bit that I need to not be completely inappropriate for. I think you just, out over time, you either get stuck in a rut or you figure out what works for you. It's one of the two. Cleaning up a little bit of the sparkly transfer. I like it. I'm gonna grab a little finer brush. We're gonna take this lightest color in here called Bling Bling. That's gonna be my inner corner highlight. Anyway, the whole optical illusion of lighter to darker is just to make my eyes not look so close set. And I like trying up other techniques sometimes. And if your eyes are not hooded small, close set, you probably use a different technique and probably can get away with a lot more. Like halo eyes. I'm so jealous of people that can do halo eyes. I do halo eyes and all of a sudden I'm like more cross-eyed than I normally am. I didn't even realize I was cross-eyed until I was like 37. And then I had some guy say, oh, oh yeah, you look super cross-eyed. Fuck you. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're going to, mm, I haven't used Rockstar. I'm going to use, I wanted to use the purple. This is not really a a purple look, is it? I'm going to use Rockstar. Sorry. Right down here. This is a really, really pretty palette. I need to use that dark magic one, don't I? Maybe I'll use that for date night this weekend. That gave me kind of a smoky eye. She's a big fan of black eyeliner, so I'm going to put on a little bit of black liquid eyeliner. This is uh, Super Cat, which is Soap and Glory. Don't really care for the Morphe liquid eyeliner. So... I don't know what other ones she might have mentioned. This is one of those that's like a felt tip liner. All right, a little bit of black eyeliner on. Let's throw on some mascara. What do I have? I got the Tarte Big Ego mascara. I don't know what mascara. This is a poorly planned video. I should have done more research into exact ones that she's mentioned. I feel like she's used this though. Not recently. She doesn't do a ton of makeup videos anymore and her videos are pretty spread out. No, not for a second do I think that I need to buy her products to help support my friend because I don't know her. We live literally clear across the country. Never met her, never talked to her. I don't even think that she's ever liked any of my videos or Instagram posts, even when I've tagged her stuff in it, which is sad because some of the other big brands do. Thank you, Natasha. I appreciate you. That Tarte Big Ego Mascara, that's junk. I don't like that at all. We're gonna go in with something else. Let's use the Too Faced Better Than Sex. We'll take that over the top of that, see if we can't get more length and volume and whatever else. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I know Jacqueline uses a lot of 
eyelashes and stuff like that and I just can't be bothered. I do have some. I have a whole drawer full. My daughter actually got me a gift certificate for my birthday last February for eyelash extensions or whatever they're called. You know that they go in and they put them on? Yeah, I still haven't done that. I called her once or I reached out to the gal that has the salon once and she was like, yeah, I'm totally booked up. And I'm like, okay, well, me too. So someday I'll use it. That's about as good as that gonna get. Okay, I've got a couple different highlighter situations. This palette right here, this Jacqueline palette, the Flare, those shades are way too dark for me. Maybe this one I can get away with. It's still pretty dark. The rest of these are not, those are, those are not highlighters for me. Those are eyeshadows, if anything. So we're not going to use that one. I do have this loose one. I'm scared to open this for fear that it's going to go everywhere. This is in the shade. I haven't even used it yet because I've been so scared. This is in the shade Bomb. And the packaging is beautiful. I really do like this. I didn't get any of this in PR if I didn't mention it earlier. And it looks like it might be a slightly lighter than this lightest shade in here still with a little bit of a gold flip to it. This is the other one that I got, which is Iced. And again, with the fingerprints on it. And yeah, that's a, a lighter color by just a little bit. And it's a little bit more pinky undertone. So we're going to try this one. Oh my gosh, her highlighters. Wow. Okay, so this one I just now recalled tends to go a little gray on me. And now I look like Rudolph. Let's take that down just a little bit. I just got my dry foundation brush that I'm kind of just sort of blending that in. So if I don't do anything, if I don't press over it with a damp beauty blender or go back in with my foundation brush, then it is, it's too much. And it looks a little, a little gray cast. Okay, we need lips. This is where we get controversial. Okay, I bought three of her original hairy lipsticks on hairy lipsticks because of the controversy. Okay, but I bought three of them. I never got any hairs in mine. That's too dark for my look today. It's this one. I think this is the one I use the most. Uh, so I bought three of them. I think I, I bought the colors that were available when they launched that I could still get to. That one is super creamy, but too dark. I, I bought these, never noticed any problem with them after all the stuff came out. I did notice that some of them have like a little tiny bit of, they're like little hard balls in them, but I didn't stop using them. I did stop using them. I stopped using them for a long time, frankly, because they were, I put them in my drawer. She refunded me my, my money. Since we're going with a lot of Morphe stuff, I'm just going to go with Morphe Gemma. It's going to be my lip liner. And it's pretty brown too. Got like a 90s lip look here. Lip liner's on. I did get my money refunded. I have no issues with it at all. I mean, I still smell a little bit of like birthday cake. I think that was kind of one of the scents that she went with. Yeah, I'm using them. I don't care. I used it. I think it actually goes okay with this look. I did buy two of her new liquid lips though. These are, these dry down very, very matte. They're like a thinner liquid. I wanted the one called Be Brave. I, I missed out on that one. That went fast. That one has a little bit of a yellow undertone to it. Kind of almost like a little bit of a apricot-y, apricot nude maybe I'd call it. And this one is, wait, what shades did I get? This little apricot one is called Absolutely. And then this one right here is called Gratitude. And it's a little bit more chocolatey. I think it's too dark for my look right now. So I'm gonna use Absolutely right here in the center. And I got on my teeth. It's gonna dry down and then it's gonna be matte. And I think I'm gonna leave it matte today. Normally I go over things with glosses and stuff and I'm just not going to. So I have two of her luminous powders. I've got two of her luminous powders. I have Doomy, which is a very light color. And then I have Brilliant, which is a little bit more of a bronzy or rosier color. I've been using this a lot more this time of year because I have a little bit more color to my face. I'm just gonna go in, probably not the fluffiest brush. And we're just gonna go all over the complexion I've been using this particular one, Brilliant, a lot lately when I need to warm up or darken too light of a foundation application. I'm just gonna use that brush to kind of buff out that top ledge. I didn't, I don't do any brow highlighter right underneath my brows. All right. You knew it was coming, her Morphe setting spray. Not her Morphe, but she used this all the time. This is 
the one that I realized you don't have to I probably just got it in my contacts you don't have to do just a little bit you can actually use a lot of it and when you buy them on sale they're fine okay you guys this was my uh going back and visiting some Jaclyn Hill some favorites some products some collaboration not everything she's ever done there's no way I could have done that but some of the stuff that I had in my collection already thought it'd be kind of fun to play with do an everyday simple look using some of the Jaclyn Hill products and I actually really like my makeup so tell me what you think do you guys support her and what I mean by support do you guys support her coming back around coming back from lipstick gate are you supportive of her as a young lady who makes mistakes and figures things out and gets back up on her feet again or are you part of the cancel culture and you're like, no, she needs to go hide under a rock and go away. Again, I don't, I don't know her. <laughs> I'm never going to meet her. There's just no way our worlds are going to collide. Uh, and, and that's okay too. I know it's controversial, but I like the Morphe products sometimes. Yeah, this was kind of fun playing with some stuff that I've had for a long time that I either haven't tried in a while or, you know, working in incorporating some of the new products that I picked up recently that I actually am really enjoying. This lip combination is great. Hairy lipstick and all. All right, you guys, I hope you're doing really well, and until my next video, bye for now.